John, you're very welcome here to Satanta College in Thurles. Um, and it is the 21st of August. It's a couple of days after the All Ireland final. Um, probably something that you had looked forward to from yeah, early on in the year in the All Ireland final. Yeah, big time. Uh, I don't know, we, we had aspirations of winning Monsters in All Ireland this year. And it was a, you know, an inter interesting journey, I suppose. But I suppose when you're that close, um, even on Sunday, I was doing a, a thing with Today FM and uh, myself and Conor Lehan, obviously two of us had lost in the semi-final and as he said, you're nearly better off losing the semi-final by 10 or 15 points than, than actually a pint, you know, or the way they were beaten after extra time, you know, especially when they were up six points with 10 minutes to go. And same with us, we were with the boss between getting to an All-Ireland final and, and not getting to an All-Ireland final, but I think that's sport, that's life and uh, you just have to get on with it. And, on Sunday, I was, I, was, I was fairly depressed, especially when you're alongside Limerick. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you can see the emotion and um, and the euphoria that they, that they got out of it. And even your stare, the atmosphere that was around the city and uh, around Clannar, which is right in the border, it was, it, was, it was amazing to see. And I suppose it gave you motivation to try and get back there next year and, uh, and go at it again. And um, look, the big thing about Sunday when it was over, you know, there's a, drawing, a line, line drawn under it and uh, the you know, season's finished and you know, at least you can just look forward to kind of getting back trend and, and and getting back in the field next year and, and trying to right the wrongs and, and get up to that Crow Park and, and that all Ireland Day, which is a special day. So you're really in the epicentre of what's good at hurling at the moment. Um, and being so close as well, Limerick, Tipperary, Galway, which is that circle around you, are you do you share much? Do you communicate much? Do you do you exchange much between each other as players? Um, I suppose the interaction would be massively. You know, you wouldn't have a massive interaction, but I suppose when you were back in college, you would have talked about mm -hmm. it a lot, and you would have played with a lot of the lads. You know, there's. You know, I was delighted for certain lads that I would have gone to school with, like Seamus Icky. I was in secondary school with, in boarding school with Seamus, and just to see him winning his All Ireland, you know, was a special thing for me. Anyway, it brought a nice tear to my eye because. Oh, Seamus would have been a great friend and um, and a guy that I would have looked up to when I was, I'll say, I know he was two or three years older than me, but when I was in Flannans, he would have been the main man, you know, when he was in fifth okay. year and I was only in second year or third year. And to look up to him and see him win his All-Ireland and see what he's put into, put into for Limerick Hurling and for his own sporting life and, and the dedication that he's put into it, he, you know, he gave me a lot of inspiration and I was delighted to see him win and see him you know, with his, his, his three children and, and his wife and and then you know just the, the the I suppose the euphoria and the the happiness that was in his face and John you know, see Declan Hannon who I would have played with in Mary Eye and um I would have seen the leadership that he gave when we were playing for Skibbon in Mary Eye and, and see the great hurler that he was and you know he's had his ups and downs, you know, he's played in the Forest of Limerick and um and you know, a lot of people have, have were given out, you know, when we won in two thousand thirteen the semi final when he missed the few frees and just to see how he came back and um you know, it was a colossal for, for Limerick this year and um, I was delighted to see him lift the, the trophy because look, he, he's a friend of mine and uh, mm. a guy that, that I would have great time for and I was delighted for him. And, I suppose in that, what you're mentioning as well there and I'm wondering, are you saying that role models are more than just well-known names? I mean, some of your role models even long before you got to the county scene, how much did they play um, a part in your development? A massive, like I suppose one big person I would have looked up to, especially being a forward when I was younger, uh, was James O'Connor and, and then I suppose one of the main reasons why I went to Flannans was to play hurling um, because it was probably a, a, I suppose a, a place that everyone went to, you know, when you, it was a great association with Clare Hurling and the titles they'd won in, in school, you know, back along um, and I loved going up there, it was, it was a great place for me to to develop as a person because I went to there as a boarding school and I suppose when you go off there at uh, mm. 11 or 12 years of age it's you know it's you learn a lot when you join boarding school it's uh, 100 lads above in in, in um you know, being taught and, and living together 24 7 and uh, you know you live on the campus in in in, in St. Flannans and I, I loved it and it really made me mature and grow up as a person and then obviously I developed myself as a a hurler up there as well because you were training a lot and training at a high standard the whole time and you see the same thing with, with Limerick it's, it's Oscar Reach has really developed into a nursery for Limerick hurling in the city and um, 
you, know, you can see the clubs that have developed, uh, benefited from this, like ourselves in Clannar, Cracklow, and and you can see that uh, Napier Street winning the All Ireland clubs and different mm. things. You know, they all came through the system in in Oscarish that would predominantly have been seen as a a rugby rugby school, but now I suppose yeah. it's associated with a, a hurling and rugby school. You know, so it's great to see that that um, coming through and. Like I remember in Flannan's seeing, you know, I remember the first day he was my teacher in in in, in Flannan's with James O'Connor and you know, the the admiration and the the a role model that he would have been for me and just to kind of even on and off the field when I saw him as a teacher how he he um he used to you know I I say kind of show himself up every day, you know, how, how professional he was in his suit and, and, and the way he dressed and the way, you know, little different things he would walk around with the suitcase and it just, you know, it was just good to see that kind of side of things you know, that you wouldn't have seen on the field or, or and mm. to see how he applied himself on and off the field and um, it's kind of something that I would have always looked up to and uh, um, and still looked up to him just, you know, when he, when he says kind words on and, you know, to, to you uh, personally, like. You're a teacher now. And so I suppose in many ways a role model as well, but in teaching. Um, so what attracted you into teaching? Was it more of similar to what you're talking about? Or did you all say, well, I want to be a teacher? Yeah, look, look uh, I, since I was young, I suppose it, when you come to that age and you have this, you know, I often see the ch children now or students now and they're trying to fill out the CAO and I just didn't know what I wanted to do. But um, I was unlucky. I, I didn't get primary school teaching at first off. I actually went to NUIG in Galway. Um, and did an arts degree in, in um, geography and economics um, and then I said look I really wanted to be a teacher and uh, I spent six months working voluntary in the Gwale School in, in, in Ennis um, to try and improve my Irish and, and get into the postgraduate course and uh, I was lucky enough to get a place in that then the following year um, and spent uh, 12 months there and, and completed my, okay. uh, my course then or 18 months there, sorry, and completed the, the course then and, and become a primary school teacher in 2013. Um, and, you know, I was, I was a substitute teacher for a while and doing different things. And um, But luckily enough, now I'm a permanent teacher in St. Aidan's National School in Shannon. Uh, but it's, it's a great experience. It's, it's, you know, it has its ups and downs, you know, and some days I, I love and some days I find it difficult. But uh, it's, I do feel that, I remember when I was young that I had certain teachers that really, kind of left lasting impressions in my in my mm -hmm. in the way I am as a person and and um I remember my my P, my principal PJ Fitzpatrick you know just bringing us out at, in junior infants holding the hurley up in the air and uh you know, showing us little things like just how to strike the ball and hold the hurley and um you know that is a I've always had massive admiration and um, time for him because of that and you know then I had a great teacher in Mr Horgan and uh, he's still the principal of the school now at the moment he's the prin principal now in, in Clannara National School and, you know just uh, when I meet him I, I still you know do I call him Eddie or do I call him Mr Horgan you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. and even though I taught there for six months I, I still had that yeah. you know yeah. uh, what way do I juggle it but I just remember he used to say a great thing uh, every day follow him to Ruddy New Gach Law uh, you learn something new every day, and it always stuck with me that you know you, you learn on and off the, the field, and uh, you know I try my best to be as uh, be a role model like they were to me, and and I had many great teachers, but those two really stuck out in my mind. And um, it, it, when I was really young and at that age, you're kind of you're influenced by, influenced by a lot of people, and uh, mm -hmm. they were they were big uh, influencers in, in in my life, um, and uh, I've always you know great mm. appreciation for what they did for me and that's why I went into teaching I just thought that I could especially at primary school level I think you can help our children a lot in, in at that age and um and especially the way life has gone in the last few years you know there's a big change between when I was in school to now uh, that they do need a lot, of, a lot more guidance and a lot more um help and assistance and um I just feel that I can help out at different times and, and be that that uh, person that they can rely on or have a chat with or or even to just bring them out and, and on the sporting fields or or outside of school and the extracurricular activities and, and just give them um, an inspiration or drive to to be as good as they can be so the road Nua that that your uh, mr horgan uh, would say to you every day Dowling road Nua. what road Nua have you learned this year in relation to you perhaps or claire 
uh, have to or do you have to do to be in to go one step forward next year yeah like uh, i suppose personally i've learned a lot this year uh, i played for claire for 10 years now and um, up to this year i would have just kind of gone out and, and trained and and followed the direction that i'd been given but we were lucky we got a nutritionist in this year um grania travers and she helped uh, she helped me a lot in terms of um you know that maybe the proper foods i wasn't eating or like i, I was i was eating very healthily and uh, as she described that i i would have had a an a-class diet but i was only getting a c-class grade and i went off to get a um i got a test done in, in england just to to see what you know how, how, how was my my body reacting to the food i was eating and uh, and what minerals I might have been deficient in and it came back that it showed that I had a deficiency in my um, my digestive system and that uh, like, uh, we, we tried different things in as the year went on to assist so different minerals and different supplements to, to help me and thankfully I haven't been sick in a, in a long long time and uh, my digestive seems, system seems to be working way better and um, in daily life and even on match days and um, the food that I'm eating, I'm eating a lot more chicken, turkey, and uh, fish, and and lighter foods that will be a lot lighter in my 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 digestive system, and um, just uh, just I just feel a lot healthier and happier, and and uh, more energy on the, on and off the field, and uh, you know I suppose it's taken me ten years to to find that, but uh, I was delighted to find it this year because um, I I found it a massive benefit. Um, and then also, you know, I just have looked in a lot into the mental side of the game. Um, tried it now and then, but I'd never kind of stuck by it or, or really, you know, we've had people in talk to us before, but uh, we were lucky enough this year that we had a great man involved. Uh, um, and uh, he really kind of just, not, not that he really pushed out there, he just gave you little snippets mm. here and there and um, just gave you little pointers and... Uh, I went off and read up on it a bit more and uh, I started up a little diary um, every day, uh, just kind of the same thing, I'd write it out every day but it started off with a small piece and it nearly ended up with a full page that I'd write out every day and um, it just helped me feel more relaxed and happy and uh, when I was playing I wasn't nervous going out in the field anymore and uh, anxious and um, I was very comfortable in, in my environment and very um, happy in what I was doing with with Claire and, and I think it came across then in the field as well and um, I, you know, I just really enjoyed my hurling this year. So from doing the core elements of your training and that around that you've just described it look diet and nutrition is very important for you now and then were you to embrace that years ago you know you could have added to your performance whatever and psych Ecologically, the work that you were doing as well is another area. Is there anything in specifically now that Clare in general are counties outside of Limerick? Um, do you feel that there are other areas that could be improved again, or is it a level playing field still? Is there any difference between counties at that level? Um, you see between the six or seven top teams, even eight, there, there isn't much of a difference. You know, if you look at all the games this year, there wasn't said so it was only a puck of a ball, you know, for us to even, like we played a Turles here against Tipperary and in the group round robin games and I suppose Tipperary weren't going that well in the championship up to that game and they came out with a massive, massive intensity, massive game that, that day and they would have the post between knocking us down, out and then we went down the field and, and scored a goal directly from that um, opportunity and that kept us in the championship, like we could be out and not talking about this, you know, and, we we had a terrible year then if we if we got knocked out of, out of that stage with Claire, um where you know it's just a little thing that has changed. You need that bit of luck I think on your side as well at times um in any competition and uh, you saw then when we played in the semi final we were that with at the post between mm. going to another in a final mm. or, or or winning an other in semi final and instead we lost it and God went from that direct save or that opportunity to go down in the field and, and score a point which put them two up so don't know, just little little things to change games and um uh, i don't think there's a lot uh, of a difference between both team, all teams i think they're all very professional setups and i think they're all trying to do the right thing and, and their coaching is very good um 
I just think that you know, just having that desire and that will to win, and you could see it with Limerick the weekend, um, how they probably had that fearless attitude you know, in terms of how young they are and and how well coached mm. they are. And um, but look, on any given day, if Galway probably went out again next week, they could beat them, you know, or any of the teams that were in the the last four or any quarterfinals, you know, because it's a really open system now and, and there's there's a lot of great teams there now so um look we're just looking forward to really getting back training in a few months time and getting back to try and get back up to that uh all ireland day and and you know had the motivation now to go again you got injured john um and you're holding probably a couple of injuries um so when do you expect to start back or is there a plan in place that when you regroup or, or whatever for claire are you club bound? What are what what's happening with you now in that area? Yeah, I would have got injured <clears> against Galway the first day. I, I uh, actually tore my posterior ligament, um, but uh, like it, it's it, it's sore, still sore at the moment. But uh, it's not, I suppose, stopping me fully from playing. I can play with strapping and stuff. But um, since I've gone back with the club now, we're just trying to give it three to four weeks just to really settle down and and heal and um, because the last thing you want is. Mm. Uh, me falling awkwardly or, or hyperextending my my knee and fully tearing it and then I'd be out for six to nine months so uh, it's a fine balance between um, you know, hurting yourself fully or, or you know, I have to be careful and um, but we're back with the clubs now we're trying to focus on our club championships which is very important as well because um, that's where we start and that's where we'll finish and um, you know that's that's a massive important aspect of my life and the club uh, means as much as it as as it does playing for Clare and hopefully we can go on and win a Cameron Hamilton uh, with 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 them and win my my my, uh, my great friends you know that that mm. probably I'm, I'm going to always be be with you know and um, you know the club is a great thing and it's a great scene and uh, I really enjoy it but uh, then I suppose we'll get back with Clare again in in October time and um, um and and really just try and focus on how we can get those little inches and, and little. Um, get better individually and get better as a collective and um, you know be as good as we can be for for Claire Hurling and and get back to that pinnacle and that is winning all Ireland and Munsters. In your role now as as a teacher, you're you're obviously involved with encouraging probably children to be more involved in sport, but. It's a changed landscape now. I'm sure. Have you seen that over your your years since your own youth, compared to what you're seeing now in terms of children, um, and what are the challenges for you as a teacher in that? Yeah, there's a lot of challenges. Like uh, I suppose when we were when I was a young boy in in school, you'd come home, you'd finish your homework, and it'd be how you could get out for three to four hours. Like we lived outside the hurling field, and I lived in the hurling field, or else if. If that wasn't the case, there a big bunch of us would meet up at the cross and we'd go climbing trees or we'd uh, go missing down around the golf course you know, that was there at the time and how many golf balls could we get, which was outside the river. And thinking back, it was probably madness, you know. I had a bike going down the road and there was no you know, there was no brakes on it. So there was a, an old man, uh, Paddy Maloney, used to be always giving out to me, you stop, you know, how are you going to stop yourself? So I used to stop myself from my feet, you know, sliding down the, 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 the hill and... Um, like I remember my cousins used to come down and we used to have a, a go-kart and a few little tractors on my brother's tractors he used to be mad into um, into into farming and we'd raced we had a hill at home you know, kind of up to the sheds um, in the farmer sheds and uh, we'd race down the hill um, like a Formula 1 like because Formula 1 used to be on the TV at the time and you'd Damien Hill and uh, David Coulthard and yeah. uh, Mick Hackinen and um, what's your name? Michael Schumacher and we used to like we used to reenact it like you know I'd be on the blue tractor and yeah. we'd have all these going down and we'd be hitting and hitting off each other and it was a like we'd have someone down at the road so uh, it was kind of like you go down the hill and then a turn and go down the other hill there was two hills and um, like we'd have someone down at the bottom of the road then to tell us that there was no cars coming um, <laughs> so it's how fast we could get down the hill and it was great crack like you know, was, you know thinking back but Children now are not allowed to do that kind of stuff, you know. It's how they can yeah. wrap them up in cotton wool. In my eyes, you know that the, I suppose people are afraid of them going outside, and uh, you know the, you know they're not allowed outside the gate. In, in my opinion, which I think you know, 
I was always allowed out. You know, it was just the times, I suppose, at the time. There was no fear of any dangers. Yeah. Um, yeah. And now there is. And uh, like, a, in one way, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a problem because like okay. from climbing those trees, yeah. I developed my, you know, my range of motion, you know, or climbing gates or, and I was lucky enough, look, I, 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 grew, I grew up on a farm. We had loads of green area and, and, um, places to, to, to play and, um, and climb trees and do all those different things. But it's, it's a thing that's probably, uh, children are being neglected in that sense because, um, now it's sitting on the couch and they have, you know playstations and different things that preoccupy their minds and um it's not about getting out hitting the ball against the wall or kicking a football or or climbing or cycling the bike or doing different things you know that are activity based yeah. it's 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 how they can play the games and, and beat each other on on a on a on a, on a computer game you know so um i'd be always encouraging my children in my classroom to get out and you know, especially when we don't have when there's lovely weather or, I don't give them homework like I just tell them to get out because that's you know get off the, the the couch get out get off the iPads get off the playstations and and really go out and enjoy themselves and, and interact with each one another and play soccer for two hours you know or do yeah. different things that, yeah. that I used to do when I was young and uh, um, I wouldn't change my childhood anyway I, you know, I remember the first thing that we first piece of technology that we got into my house was a game by when we were about 13 you know 12 or 13 yes and you remember those game yes. boys with the, yeah, the, yeah. the yeah. The, the black and white screen black and white, yeah. it was a Pokemon or something that we used something to like my that, mother yeah. we got so mad into it that she hit it so we were only allowed to have it uh, every three days for an hour and it looked like it just shows that you can get addicted to it you know so mm. that's what I think children are now like I'd often see him in my class that my one had my he was he was he was asleep on the table and I said like what was wrong with you he said I was up playing the bases until three o'clock you know so I said go back to sleep there for half an hour an hour because he was no good to me yeah. you know yeah and he was better off but my point is that that's their that's their you know, how much it's changed in 20 years we'll say from my youth to to children's youth now you know it's 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 very different and and it's scary you know we we, we have big problems with obesity and um and their their reliance on technology is 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 probably um, a bit insane but John, you've you've already committed, and even through your your good self, to creating better facilities, uh, even in Clonlara as well, so that you can encourage more activity. But that in itself is probably only one aspect, isn't it? Creating facilities. I mean, there are other challenges that are there as well. Um, uh, not least, technology is a a challenge, even though technology is terrific in it. Yeah. But once it's used in the right way and in a balanced way, um. So you're 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 twenty nine now, um, and as a teacher, what are you? What are you, are you, is there anything of interest that you have? Uh, what are your thoughts on? Well, how can we manage this better, um, so that children do have the equal time, probably, of an opportunity that you have, perhaps not as mad in yeah. in, in in the way that you did it. Um, because that probably wouldn't be allowed now. Mm. But wh what have you in mind or what would you like to see happening? Yeah, well, I, like, I was lucky enough, about two years ago I met with the GPA um, and they kind of put me into guidance so with a person to have a chat just about where I wanted mm. to see my my future going. And um, then they, they said, why don't you do uh, the course with Satanta College, you know, the, the strength and conditioning course. And um, I found it very interesting, obviously, when, I, when we sat down, I was kind of thinking, how could I develop my own side of my own personal uh, knowledge and interest in, in health and fitness and, and see how can I improve my own training? Um, and then I was looking forward to the future and see how could, as me as a, a teacher and as a professional, how could I help in the classroom in, in terms of children's fitness and the movements that they, that I suppose I was lucky enough to develop, let's we'll say by cycling and, 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 just being out in the farm and going up and helping in the the, mm. the farming sense or, or going over to the field playing soccer and hurling and 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 climbing trees that maybe that they don't have that um exposure anymore and, and how could i 
develop my knowledge in that sense and, and see can I bring it to my classroom um, because not every school has top class facilities you know some schools have great facilities in terms of halls and and great teachers that are full of energy and full of life towards sport but not every school has that you know so um, we're, we all have our different talents and you can see that in the teaching profession you know some are great at art some are great at music some really love the Irish, some love maths, yeah. but how can we utilize you know, and develop that into a way that you know there is there is a support there for each child in a school setting um, to to help them in their development in um, in their their movement skills and and their interest in different types of sports because um, you know if you're not good at like I know when I was young in in my old school if you weren't good at hurling and football. Gaelic football then there wasn't a lot there for you otherwise okay. you know and that was just tradition that's just yeah that's the way the traditional um sport in, in Ireland has been you know GA oriented and um, especially in the countryside anyway uh, and then I suppose that has developed in a lot in the last few years you know, you know in our own school now we'd have um uh, cross country athletics soccer Gaelic football um hurling come over, you know different loads of different sports but um, you know, you can see the way that Ireland has gone and, and how successful we are in, in, in the hockey you see recently and um, in the European um, championships recently in swimming and athletics and different things like that that uh, we need to develop developing a lot of different type of, of sports mm. in our schools and getting them to, to get that exposure and, and understanding and how we do that is, is, is very important um, uh, in a teacher sense. Great, because there's your challenge really, isn't it? It's the promotion of activity within a country where activity now is an issue, mm. uh, not only for children, but for everybody, where we do have a lot of sport and activities, not just sport related, but physical activity, but which we're not engaging in as much as we used to. So there are huge challenges, but the role of the parent as well is a very important role in that, John, because you as a teacher, I suppose, it shouldn't just be left to the teacher yeah. to inspire and encourage and yeah. get involved. I mean, the parent really and community, I suppose. Would you have any particular views on that? Yeah, look, I, like, I would try in my own classroom and in all schools, they try and promote the healthy eating. But if a child comes into school with poor food I can't pick up that that lunchbox and put it in the bin you know they have to eat they have to be able to function for the day and I'd be trying to tell them you know that these they'd have to come in with the nutrient bars and all these different things but if you look at the nutrient bars they're full of sugar you know and, and they're kind of they give you a spike you know that's the whole point mm -hmm. to them. Um, and I'd be trying to tell them you know bring in more fruit and veg and in fairness now that we, we kind of did a little project this year for about six weeks and they, at the start of the year and they really got them um, eating healthily and, and like we'd inspect each other's lunches every day and just to try and talk like what is good what is bad um, I got Padge Collins into we got Padge Collins into to speak to the class and, and he, he his knowledge then was great you know it's not just me they're used to hearing me every day but when he was talking about them and we were just using our knowledge that we gained throughout our time with Claire and, and the exposure that we've got from different people and that has been brought on another level this year with our nutritionists, you know, and we were going to games now this year with lads having bags of baking done, you know, kind of, which is, yeah. you know, different, like we didn't have that before, you know, and they were coming with little, um, you know, buns ready for, you know, for before the match and at half time, you know, just to keep them ticking over. And, um, but that was great for us. And look, it took me 10 years to gain that knowledge. And then, um, but see if I can pass that back as a role model to, to children and to parents, which is the most important thing, because they're the ones going out and buying the lunches. They're the ones going out buying the, the food yeah. for the children. And the yeah. children can't buy the food. Um, and um, I think it's just very important that we, we, we build that link between the school and the home. Um, however we do it, uh, it'll be very important in the future because obesity is becoming an issue and um, mm. we have great initiatives there, but it's just to really develop that link um, and if it's not there uh, we are still going nowhere yeah you know you again in that you, you've raised so many kind of cultural and environmental and where we are in 2018 and for the next few years challenges and you as a teacher you, you have them at your doorstep and um, you have them as an athlete or a player as well uh, we could keep talking on this because i'd love to go on and talk about 
the, the role of fundamental movement skill development. Yeah. I'd love to talk about your own, your, your own career ahead of you. Um, you have many years still to go as a player, but I'd love to look a little after that to see what plans you have in place. But we're going to wind up now because um, we're going to let you home to get back to do the work at home as well, yeah. which is very important. And John, thank you very much for being here with us and we wish you the best of luck. Firstly, with the club now and, 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 then, and then back in school as well. So the best of luck with everything there. Thank you, Liam. So lovely to thank speak to you, John.